Hey folks, I'm Tori. Welcome to Bass Strategy. You know, a lot of times we are spending time on this channel going over intermediate and advanced bass fishing tricks. But today I want to go back to the basics. For those of you who just want to go out and catch bass, maybe you don't go out often, you don't go fishing often, maybe you're going on a camping trip, some of your buddies are going to be out fishing, and you just want to pick up a rod and try to catch some bass. So today we're going to go over three lure recommendations that can catch bass anytime, anywhere, with the exception of winter and very cold water. So I just want to direct you down to the video description. I'm going to put some additional tips and uh, lure recommendations for you along with line recommendations. So check that out for some bonus uh, details. But let's get started with my first lure recommendation. So the first lure I'm going to recommend is looking for a small sized spinner bait. Something like this. This particular one is a war eagle. And you should look for something that's about a quarter ounce. You're just going to toss it out there and you're going to just reel it in slowly and it's going to stay right below the surface looking like just a little school of bait fish. Take a look at those blades and you see how they're just a little bit rounded. It's called an Indiana style blade. That vibration is going to mimic something a little bit more like a sunfish, but it's still at the same time going to give you a lot of flash. So check out something that looks somewhat like that with the blades. Try to pick up a quarter ounce small low profile spinner bait like this one and just cast it out and you're going to reel it in just so it stays underneath the surface of the water. You don't want it to sink too far down. Just keep this, it's more of a chuck and wind lure and just keep it just under the surface of the water. Now the next lure recommendation I have is actually a, it's one of my secret lures. I recommend it to beginners all the time and it's still something I use from time to time myself. And that is this guy right here. It's called the Jointed Rapala and it's specifically the J07 size. It's very small, very light, and it's gonna float. Now what you're looking for is perfectly calm water. This works best in the early morning. So getting up at sunrise when that water is almost like a sheet of glass, this is when this is going to work the best. So you're going to cast it out and let it just sit on the surface of the water and let that those initial ripples dissipate. Then once those are clear, you're going to be waiting about 30 seconds to a minute, just letting it sit there you're going to ever so slightly twitch it. So what you're looking for when you twitch this on the surface of the water with your rod tip, just giving it the littlest bit of movement, what you're looking for is just a little bit of movement and water movement on the front of the lure itself. So you just want the water out, out where your line is tied at the front of this lure to move. You don't necessarily want too much disturbance around the back of the lure. It's okay if you do, but I think it works best just to make it move as little as possible on the surface of the water. Now this is a patience game. You're going to be taking two, three, sometimes five minute long casts letting this sit on the surface of the very calm water. Sometimes you're going to catch some sunfish and bluegills doing that, and that's a good sign. So what you're really trying to do is create commotion and create uh, curiosity out of the sunfish. So when this is sitting up there, the sunfish are going to be looking at it, and they're all going to kind of follow and school around this lure and kind of look at it and maybe nip it a little bit. Um, that's perfect because any bass that are around are going to notice all of this activity and move in and check out to see what's going on. And when they get there, they're going to be looking at your lure just sitting there and ever so slightly moving, looking just like a bait fish that is on its last fins. 
that's why you're leaving it there trying to get as much attention to it as possible and that's when you're going to get those bass of all sizes. I've caught some big bass using this method. So definitely check out this jointed Rapala J07 size. My last lure recommendation is going to be a soft plastic and the one I'm going to recommend is actually going to be this guy right here, the Lunker City Sluggo. Now the reason I'm recommending this plastic lure in particular is because you can use it in a variety of ways. You can throw this out and use it like a subsurface lure. So you're going to let it just go right below the surface and then you're going to use your rod and your rod tip to jerk it around and it'll dart very erratically subsurface. Or you can let this sink all the way down and just lift up your rod tip and let it pop up a little bit and it'll dart upward and then slowly come back down. So because you can fish two parts of the water column with this one lure, that's why I'm recommending this one. It can be very deadly on bass and it's a very overlooked lure so definitely you want to check these out. Uh, what kind of hook that you're going to pair with it is very important. So you're going to need an offset shank hook because you're going to need to rig this weedless style. Now there's a lot of information out there on how to, how to rig a Texas rig. So I'm going to show you really quick how I do it. So you're going to take your sluggo and you're going to flip it so the flat side is facing away from you. And you're going to take your hook and you're going to insert it on the top just past the barb. So as soon as you get past that barb, you're going to stop. Now you're going to push this hook point out on the top of the lure, okay? It's going to look like this. You're going to push it and go all the way up your shank. Now see what happens when I come up here. You see that little offset in the shank of your hook, you're going to put it past there, push it all the way up, and you want need this hook point to come up facing the top or the flat side of this sluggo. So I'm going to rotate it just like that. And when you rotate it, you can kind of see where that hook is going to be coming out of this lure. Now you're going to insert it through there and you're just going to bend the plastic just a little bit and take that hook point and try to get it as centered as possible and just insert it just like that and what you're looking for is the point to be as flush to the plastic as possible. I expose it just a little bit so you see how the hook point is just barely exposed there. That's what I like to do uh, with my Texas rigs. It's called a Texpose. So this material here, this logo material is pretty tough. So I, I don't want to have to drive my hook point all the way through it. This is pretty weedless. So you can get into some sparse weeds and bring it through without much issue. A lot of you have probably heard of the Yamamoto Senko, and it's a really popular fish catcher. But I don't recommend beginners use the Senko, and here's why. So when you throw a lure like that out, and you're letting it sink, a lot of your bites are going to come on the fall, and you're not going to feel them most of the time. And so the way I um, can tell if I have a bite is I'm watching my line and I can see my line move. Beginners don't really have much of a feel for that and they have a tendency to gut hook the fish. So the fish is going to eat it and by the time the angler realizes he has a fish on, that lure is then in the fish's stomach. It swallowed the lure completely and that fish is likely going to die. Now with the sluggo, you do have to watch your line a little bit, especially if you're letting it fall to the bottom. And a lot of times you are going to get bit as it falls, but 
you're interacting with this lure a lot more than the Senko and a lot more actively than the Senko. So chances are, even if you miss the strike when the fish eats it on the fall, you're gonna be interacting with this a lot sooner than you would a Senko and you're less likely to gut hook them. The other uh, disadvantage to the Senko over the Sluggo for beginners is that uh, the Senko is salt impacted and because of that they have the tendency to eat it. They have it in their mouth and they're more likely to swallow it because they think it is food. Whereas something like the Sluggo, if you don't realize the strike right away and they eat it, they're more likely to spit it out than they are to swallow it. It's not impacted with salt, so they're gonna realize at some point that this doesn't really seem right and they're gonna spit it out. So for those two reasons, you're much less likely to gut hook a fish with the Sluggo than the Senko. All right guys, like I said, there are some bonus recommendations in the video description, so check it out. I hope you liked this video. If you did, give me that like and consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.